Hypertensive disease is one of common non-communicable diseases in Malaysia. Hypertension is defined as persistent elevation of systolic blood pressure of 140 mmHg or greater and or diastolic blood pressure of 90 mmHg or greater according to the World Health Organization. A blood pressure value of 140 systolic and 90 diastolic mmHg is considered as high. Berita Harian Online on 29th of August 2019, President of the Malaysian Society of Hypertension, Dr. Muhammad Afifin Muhammad Ali, said the symptoms were becoming very important because hypertensive patients were found to have worse effects due to COVID-19 compared to the normal individuals. Next, one of the reasons this disease has been chosen in our assignment because most of the death due to COVID-19 in Malaysia have a history of hypertension. Hypertensive disease is known as silent killer. Untreated high blood pressure can lead to serious consequences such as heart attacks, strokes, and other cardiovascular disease. National Health and Morbidity Survey 2019 states 3 over 10 or around 6.4 million people in Malaysia have hypertension. Moreover, hypertension increases with age. Some of people does not take serious about hypertensive disease. They rarely check their blood pressure and do not know they have this disease. Based on National Health and Morbidity Survey 2019, only half are aware that they have this disease. Among these, 90% are on medication but only 45% have their blood pressure controlled. A global monitoring network by World Health Organization target 25% relative reduction in raised blood pressure prevalence or containment of the prevalence according to national circumstances by 2025. This graph from Malaysian Healthcare Performance Unit, it showed only 0.9% reduction of population with raised blood pressure in Malaysia over a 3-year duration. At that rate, over the next 7 years, it is estimated that there will be a total of 4% to 5% reduction in raised blood pressure population prevalence in Malaysia. Therefore, we would like to explore and share to people the development of hypertension due to problem in the metabolism and its treatment. Hopefully, we can create awareness about this disease and help to decrease blood pressure prevalence in Malaysia as targeted by World Health Organization. We will continue to the metabolic problems that leads to hypertension. So let's talk about the primary hypertension. The first one is hypersensitive sympathetic nervous system. The second one is hypersensitive renin angiotensin aldosterone axis. And the third one is low renin hypertension. The first one is hypersensitive sympathetic nervous system. It plays a big role in regulating our blood vessels. Sympathetic neurons are linked from the thoracolumbar region to the different receptors of arterials, thus increasing sympathetic nervous system's activity. It will release norepinephrine on different receptors of smooth muscle of the arterials, leads to vessel constriction, increasing the total peripheral resistance and thus increasing the blood pressure. Hypersensitive sympathetic nervous system can also act on our heart too. It will act on sinoatrial node where it will increase the heart rate, increasing the cardiac output and thus increasing the blood pressure. It will also act on our ventricular myocardium that will increase the contractility of cells, thus increasing the stroke volume, increasing the cardiac output and then increasing the blood pressure itself. The second metabolic problem in hypertension is hypersensitive and in angiotensin aldosterone axis. Our kidney has the staglomerular cells that respond to the epinephrine on the specific receptors. It will secrete renin in large amount and lead to the large production of angiotensin 2. Increasing in renin and angiotensin 2 causing vasoconstriction in renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Angiotensin 2 also leads to an increasing in blood pressure in many ways such as aldosterone production and ADH production.
the third metabolic problem in hypertension is low renin hypertension which means when there is a decreasing in excretion of sodium from our body it will lead to an increasing in sodium retention in our blood which means our blood volume will increase and then increasing the blood pressure itself when the blood pressure is increasing it will inhibit the renin angiotensin aldosterone system which means it will decreasing the renin production and it will decreasing the angiotensin 2 production that is why it is called low renin hypertension when the sodium level is high in the blood it will causing vasoconstriction in the blood vessel thus it will increasing the total peripheral resistance and then it will increasing the blood pressure secondary hypertension Secondary hypertension is not common but it occurs in people that ages outside of age range from 25 to 55 years old. Stage 2 of hypertension is considered when your systolic pressure is 140 or higher or when your diastolic pressure is 90 or higher. There are many causes for secondary hypertension but the most common occurs in kidney. The kidney parenchyma consists of two layers, an outer cortex and inner medulla. However, if the parenchymal tissue is damaged, there is many complications that will occur. For example, glomerulonephritis is an inflammation of glomeruli in the kidney. Glomeruli remove excess fluid, electrolytes and waste from the bloodstream and pass them into urine. Glomerulonephritis occurs by itself or sometimes as part of another disease such as diabetes. The cause can be from immune disease such as lupus, which is a chronic inflammatory disease. Lupus can affect many parts of your body including your skin, joints, kidney, blood cells, heart and lungs. Severe or prolonged inflammation associated with glomerulonephritis can damage your kidneys. As a result, dangerous levels of fluid, electrolytes and waste build up in your body. Damage to your kidneys and the resulting buildup of waste in the bloodstream can raise your blood pressure. Glomerulonephritis can lead to high blood pressure because it reduces kidney function since it is damaged so that they lose their filtering ability and influence how your kidneys handle sodium. Therefore, sodium retention occurs will lead to increase of the blood volume and lastly, the blood pressure will increase. Another cause of secondary hypertension in kidney is renal artery stenosis or RAS which is the narrowing of one or more arteries that carry blood to kidneys. Narrowing of the arteries prevent normal amounts of oxygen-enriched blood from reaching the kidneys. The kidneys need enough blood flow to help filter waste and remove excess fluids. Reduced blood flow to your kidneys may injure kidney tissue and increase blood pressure throughout your body. The causes of renal artery stenosis is the buildup on kidney arteries where fats, cholesterol, and other substances like plaque can accumulate in and on the kidney artery walls which will lead to atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis occurs in many areas of the body and is the most common cause of renal artery stenosis. As these deposits get larger, it can harden, reduce blood flow, cause kidney scarring, and eventually narrow the artery. Due to the reduced blood flow, excretion will be lessened and buildup of sodium is occur. Hence, the increase of blood pressure will occur at the end. What are the treatments by medicine for hypertension? Tyrosine diuretics, angiotensin converting enzyme ACE inhibitors, angiotensin. 2 receptor blockers ARB Calcium channel blockers Beta blockers Alpha 2 agonists Vasodilators Alpha blockers Alpha beta blockers Aldosterone antagonists Renin inhibitors 
and central acting agents. In order to treat hypertension, there is also treatment by changing lifestyle. Firstly, eat a healthy diet. Eating a diet that rich in whole grains, fruits, vegetables and low-fat dairy products and schemes on saturated fat and cholesterol can lower your blood pressure. Get plenty of potassium which can help prevent and control high blood pressure. People with hypertension also need to reduce dietary sodium. As high sodium intake leads the body to hold on to water in an effort to dilute it, this extra water increases blood volume before it increases blood pressure. People with hypertension may need to keep their daily sodium intake between only 1,400mg and 2,300mg per day. A small reduction in the sodium in your diet can improve your heart health and reduce blood pressure. Next is by reaching a healthy weight. Blood pressure often increases as weight increases. If you are overweight or obese, losing weight through a heart healthy diet and increased physical activity can help lower the blood pressure. You may reduce your blood pressure with each kilogram of weight you lose. In addition, being overweight also can cause disrupted breathing while sleeping, which is sleep apnea, which further raises your blood pressure. Exercise regularly is also important for people with hypertension. As exercise can help to avoid developing hypertension, regular exercise such as 150 minutes a week or about 30 minutes most days of the week can lower your blood pressure. And last but not least, quit smoking. Tobacco can injure blood vessel walls and speed up the process of buildup of blood in the arteries. Each cigarette you smoke increases your blood pressure for many minutes after you finish. We just explain the video as a platform to present and report the information about the disease to the audiences. The main reason this method is chosen is because the information can be presented in an interesting and unique way. This video contains animation. Animation is a method in which figures are manipulated to appear as moving images. Animation makes the presentation more interesting and can grab people's attention as it is not boring. The audiences will have interest to watch the video until the end. Other than that, there are many pictures can be used in the video. Audio, photo, and many other pictures can be inserted or included in the video. For instance, the photo inserted in the video can make people visualize that information, so the information can be understood easily by the audiences. The explainer video is concise with information. The contents are simple as we simplify the complicated information using the pictures. This video can save people time because people do not have to read a long paragraph to search for points. Next, this video is easy to access. It can be shared directly in other platforms such as Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. So, the information and the knowledge can be spread and shared easily. Besides, video is one of the audio-visual aids in learning. The use of audio-visual aids in learning can make teaching learning process effective and it provides people a realistic approach and experience. People will get better understanding as this explainer video contains both audio and visual. From different perspectives, the group members can learn and get more creative in using technology. The skill in using technology such as producing video can be very useful to the students because technology has been widely used in our life.